Welcome. So to get started, we're just going to do a quick roundtable of introductions because this is our first meeting and not everybody knows each other. So I will start with myself. Uh, my name is Emma Vokes and I work in the clerk's department and I have been assigned the clerk for this committee. And to my right. My name is Christina Hahn. <laughs> I'm a history professor at Wilfrid Laurier University in Brantford. I'm also the director of the Leah Hopper Community Solutions. Thank you. I do not have a name tag. Um, my name is May Legs, and I'm the manager of the development of DRC. I'm Brian Hutchings. I'm the CEO, or incoming CEO. I'm going to do a better job than that last person. <laughs> <laughs> Brantford and um, yeah, I'm here for a wee bit. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go sneak out first. Uh, Councilor Mandy Samuel, and I'm excited to be part of it. And I am Amber King, I'm the administrative coordinator for the Technology Development Group. I'm Anna Olson, I'm the director of Brantford for Health. Hi, everybody, Victor Klinsky, I lead the Arts College of Brantford branch, and I was previously on the Tourism Advisory Committee. Very quick. Great. Um, Jane Fanay, uh, real estate developer. Uh, I'm Ray Petro. I'm a, a real estate agent and I own some businesses in town as well. I'm Tara Davy, manager of tourism, culture, and sport. I'm Sarah Monroe, Director of Economic Development, Tourism, and Cultural Initiatives. Great. I should have asked this before, but can everybody hear us at home? No, not very well. Okay. No. Let's test a different speaker. Testing, testing. It does sound clear from, from, from your speaker, but as it goes around the table, it gets worse. I, I don't oh, want this guy. That the, one's cell, the cell is not working. Okay. Okay, we will work on um, the tech right now, but I'm just gonna move forward because I'm talking and I'm using this one so you can hear me for this. Oh yes, um, actually before we do that, um, would you like to introduce yourself um, online and we can start with John Audi. Uh, good evening, uh, John Audi, past president of the Brantford Regional Real Estate Association. I'm sorry my voice is a little raspy today. I've been a realtor for 38 years and here I am. Wasn't chair for the lease last day. There's nothing to cheer about. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then we'll go to Danette. Good evening, folks. Uh, Danette Dalton, Workforce Planning Board of Grand Erie. Great. Councillor Hunt. Councillor Linda Hunt, Ward 4. And Peter. Also, I'm Peter Muir. I'm the Artistic Director of Brand Theater Workshops and the representative from the Brand Performing Arts. Stephanie? Hello, I'm Stephanie Wall. I work at the Woodland Cultural Center and I'm the representative from the Brant Museum and Galleries Association. Great, and I, I see David Prang might be here now. I'm here now. He's here. I'm here now, yes, thank you. Uh, I'll try and resolve my video issue, thank you. Uh, no Chamber of great for Brant. Great. I, I, is there anyone else? I believe that's everybody. Okay, great. So we're just going to get started. Um, I'm just going to do to uh, read off a few rules of procedures before we go into the election of the chair. So this meeting is held in a hybrid format in accordance with the electronic participation policy for virtual meetings. The full policy is uh, located online. All cameras for committee members shall remain on to ensure quorum. It's okay, David, we, we do have quorum, so you can uh, rectify that issue. Members of committee shall indicate they wish to speak by physically raising their hand or raising your hand virtually on Zoom. Uh, members who are present in person are gonna be given the opportunity to speak first. All members of the committee will vote by a physical show of hands. Please leave your hand raised until the chair has determined the result of the vote. In the event a connection service interruption occurs, we can adjourn for up to 15 minutes. And all rules for delegations under the city's procedural bylaw continue to apply. 
So we're gonna move into the elections of the chair and vice chair. Um, so are there any nominations for the chair? No? Anybody have any nominations? Anyone you think would be a good chair? I can say that counselors can't chair, so you're out of the hot seat at the moment. <laughs> nope, staff can't. You have to be a member of the committee. You can nominate yourself if you'd like. I'll nominate. Perfect. <laughs> Do you accept the nomination? <laughs> okay, Christine. <laughs> Thank you. So, Christina, uh, you are the chair. Do we have any nominations for vice chair? This is just back up when the chair is not available. I will nominate myself as uh, vice chair position. So. Okay, perfect. Great. Thank you. So, Christina, we have you as chair and we have Victor for uh, vice chair. So now I'll put you in the hot seat and pass you the chairs around that, but I will be here to help you the whole way. So we're just gonna start on the back of it. And those are your declarations. Okay, are there any declarations of conflict of interest for any of the items listed on the agenda? Any declarations of conflicts of interest? I just wanted to let you know that it's very difficult to hear the chair. Okay, thank you. I did turn it on. So is this one too now though. I turned it on. No? No. no. Um, okay, just one second. Let's try a different speaker. Yeah, try pressing the mute button at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, Emma, whatever speaker you're using is working very well. Okay, okay. thank you. Just one moment. Can you hear me? Yeah. I think it might just. Yeah. Testing, testing. This is a different speaker. We can try this one and if it doesn't work, I'll move this one down. Can you hear me now? Wave if you can. No. Okay. no. Peter got it. Oh, Peter got it. Just a moment. It's all good? Okay, I'll read it again. Are there any declarations of conflicts of interest for any of the items listed on the agenda? None online. None online. Okay. Do I move on to the next item? Okay. We have one presentation on our agenda today. I would ask Sarah Moreau to come forward to present your or do your presentation. Thank you, Christina. I'll actually ask Brian Hutchings um, to do a little bit of brief introduction and then I, I can turn it over to me. He can turn it over to me. So let's go ahead. Can, so can I look at, I can see John. Can you hear me, John? Odie? Nearly. Nearly? Okay. I'll try to speak up louder. Um, so welcome everyone. This is kind of, we've had, a, we had a number of uh, committees for economic developments. Uh, the part before it's kind of now merged into one. So it's nice to bring everybody together to one and, uh, and get a, an active community like we see here, like business owners and arts and culture and everything seems like every sector is represented. So thank you very much for coming. We look forward to being, the, I, I'm excited to, I'm excited to come back to Brantford. I'm, I'm very serious about this. Um, you know, there's all kinds of possibilities in unfinished business when it comes to economic development in the city of Brantford and things are doing very well here. But, but our challenge is not just rest of the world, so things going very well now, is the, my job always to plan 10 to 50 years out and try to try to create that vision for 10 to 50, 50 years out so the city can keep reaching for that and keep pushing for that. So that's my job when I work, work with Sarah and Kara and others in May. Um, 
and others in the organization to keep pushing out, pushing out, pushing out. So you're going to see more of that and look for a vision for economic development and, and uh, in this community. So I will turn it over to Sarah now to talk and choose to the departments and uh, many, of the, many of the great things are going on right now. Sarah? Thank you. Emma will pull up the presentation for me. I'm not going to sneak out because I have my own board meeting at 6 o'clock or the metal tell that to you. Oh, Thanks. fantastic. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Just one moment. We're bringing up the slides. Okay, can everyone see our slides at home? Yeah, perfect, great. Okay, well, thank you everyone. I'm very, very excited to look around the table, see on screen so many friendly faces. Um, I think there's only one individual I've met for the first time today. So it's really exciting to see everyone excited to be here and, and joining us for the first EDT and CI advisory committee meeting. We do a lot of acronyms in our profession. Um, so today I'm just going to do a bit of a department overview, just so that you know who we are, who you're working with day to day, who you'll come to if you have any questions at all. Um, if you have a notice of motion, you want to talk to us about that, we'll, we, we have many staff members who can assist you with that. So the corporation's vision, so that's the city of Brantford, is that Brantford will build a strong diversified economic base that provides opportunities for both citizens and potential investors while supporting and enhancing innovation and education. So that is the overarching goal. And our department's role within that overarching goal is to provide leadership and strategic direction in the development and the growth of Brantford's economic base. We do that in several ways. So we do business attraction, investments, um, retaining investment. We help uh, businesses with their expansion efforts. We help them with their labor force development. Um, so we assist in the creation and retention of jobs here in our community. And that means good paying competitive jobs in our community. We would love to see people living here and working here. Uh, we also foster entrepreneurship and innovation. So small businesses really are at the heart of our community. We felt that hard during the pandemic and that's something that's very, very important to our department and the city of Brantford in general. And we promote Brantford and its attractions. So this is the structure of our department. We have four divisions. So um, May Leg introduced herself, but May, if you can, with for everybody here, May Leg is the manager of our first division, and that's Economic Development and Business Resource Center. So we did have a previous restructure. May used to be just the manager of the Business Resource Center, and now she wears both hats. So that division's focus is business investment, attraction, retention, expansion, small business, uh, youth entrepreneurship, and, and also I should add to this one, film and new media. Real Estate Services is our next division um, that is led by Ron Gasparetto, who we let off for the night because his last day is this Friday. So we'll be posting for our manager of real estate soon. He got a wonderful opportunity with the GRCA. Um, so Ron Gasparetto is responsible for strategic acquisitions for the city of Brantford as well. So that includes um, acquisitions, dispositions of interest in land. It includes um, our leasing strategy as well. So the city of Brantford owns a lot of properties. We have many different leases, um, hundreds of leases that are overseen by that division. It also most recently includes the operations of the farmer's market and the Brantford Municipal Airport. So very specific in that instance to really a strategic direction is overseen by our department for the airport. The next division is the Sanderson Center for the Performing Arts. Many of you probably know Glenn Brown, who is the manager, the theater manager there. Um, Glenn has been with the city since 1986, 
and the Sanderson Center for the Performing Arts is a over 100 year old vaudevillian uh, theater in the downtown core. It's responsible for more than just performing arts. Um, they also do cultural capacity building. They have their own Sanderson Presents programming. They do lots of rentals. So they're, they're very diverse in the work that they do and um, even more diverse. Uh, we're working on a project with Laurier to ensure that as well. Um, and our last division is Discover Brantford or the tourism division that's led by Kara Davey. <laughs> Manager of Tourism, Culture and Sports, and Kara is responsible for what we call the DMO. So uh, DMO is a destination marketing or management organization. Um, she's responsible for investment and attracting events. So that includes bringing motor coaches here, big sport tourism events, large special events, um, industry development for the tourism sector too. So all tourism oriented businesses are connected to the DMO to ensure that they're tourism ready and that they're connected across sectors to be able to package experiences together. Um, as well as capacity building, a lot of that work happens with the arts and culture sector for capacity building. This division is also responsible for all of the marketing for the destination and that destination is Brantford. Um, as well as all of the marketing for the Sanderson Center and the marketing for the farmer's market recently as well. So very, very busy divisions. Um, just a brief overview of economic development in general, because um, this, this committee was formed, all of the other committees were disbanded and formed into one because I really wanted to see artists at the same table as developers, as realtors. I really wanted to make sure that everything was done really cohesively because our vision as a department is that economic development, culture, tourism, they're all synonymous. They're all the same thing. We're all really speaking the same language about attracting people here to spend their money here, to invest their time, their resources, bring their families here. So um, the economic development department does a lot of what you would probably know as traditional economic development. So investment attraction, which is both domestic and foreign, so we work with different levels of government. We receive inquiries from the province all the time with site selectors who want to invest here in Brantford and we do everything we can to make sure that we have space available for them. We work closely with real estate agents and lots of developers. Um, this specific group works very closely internally as well to work with groups like development engineering, de um, development planning, and we really work as a concierge to make sure that that development approval process is as quick as possible so that people have a really strong experience here when they are in Bradford. And we know that businesses really can't afford to spend time waiting. So we, we try to push those approvals on as much as possible. Um, so what we used to do really was industrial park development. City of Brantford used to really beg people to come here. We would sell land for next to nothing. That is not Brantford anymore. We are at the lowest, um, lowest availability rate for industrial land as well as industrial space for occupying. So we are very, very competitive. People want to come here. So we are responsive as quickly as possible when there's inquiries. The business retention and expansion program is also led through this division. So this is an actual in-person consultation program where we work with all different businesses from small businesses through the BRC to larger manufacturing and industrial businesses through economic development to tourism oriented businesses, arts and cultural organizations, nonprofits. So we go and visit with them. We talk to them about what their needs are in the community we connect them with resources and we work with them to build their capacity and also address any concerns that they have about their neighborhoods, about the processes within the city of Brantford. And we try to help them with those pinch points. So these for the economic development specifically side of things, we have four main sectors, advanced manufacturing, food and beverage manufacturing, plastic rubber and products and warehousing and logistics. You'll probably notice that the food and beverage manufacturing side of things is really hot right now, especially specific to chocolate. So <laughs> we're very excited about recent developments and investments here in Brantford. 
This division also oversees the film portfolio. So this is probably one of the most popular things that people are most excited to hear about. So um, a few years ago, our most recent economic development strategy in 2016, um, that, that consultant really identified this as a key market for us, somewhere where we could really make a difference. We were seeing a lot of production, spending a lot of time and money in Hamilton and Hamilton was at capacity. So Brantford stepped in and we are really becoming a, a great film destination. So it's our role to establish a film friendly city and again, act as that concierge between all of the different municipal departments to get film productions happening here in Brantford. And um, we also make sure that we protect the city, we protect its residents, we help to minimize the impact as much as possible while also prioritizing the economic investment of film productions. And those are multi, multi millions of dollars, but they're also small independent film productions and that is where that capacity building comes in. So some of the recent productions are listed here. Um, if you ever want to actually watch these productions, send me a message, I'll tell you where to watch it and at what point. Um, the city of Brantford is listed because I love to find these on streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. um, we have another production that is extremely large, extremely popular. It's uh, called Dark Planet right now that is looking to film in Brantford starting at the end of this month. So um, look for that one, but that's probably, it's going to be one of our largest. Um, before that, we were actually, uh, we had the largest episode of The Handmaid's Tale filmed here in Brantford, and that happened in just over a year ago in March. <clears throat> so the Business Resource Center is also part of this division and you've probably hopefully seen them at City Hall. They've relocated from the One Market building downtown. So the Business Resource Center is uh, one of the province's small business enterprise centers. It offers free, and this is the key point, please let any of your small business owners know about this absolutely free business advice. So if you're looking to start a business in Bradford, if you just need a little bit of help, tons of training programs. Our team is really um, here to help build your business here, help to expand your small business, help you with workforce con or yeah, workforce concerns, um, financial budgeting, forecasting, marketing, everything that you could possibly need. A lot of the small businesses in town their first call was the BRC. So it, it's a really, really wonderful resource. So the BRC also offers several different uh, provincial financing or provincial grant programs, including Digital Main Street, uh, Summer Company Plus, so that's a student business program, and Starter Company Plus. Then our real estate services portfolio. So this one includes property acquisitions and dispositions, expropriation of land, um, policy developments, appraisals in-house. Uh, we have a $1.2 million leasing portfolio. So that's revenue towards the city. And again, the daily operation of the airport and the farmer's market. So currently we are recruiting for a project manager for real estate development. That's a three-year contract. So we're looking for someone, the position closes tomorrow, who would lead some of the larger projects that the city of Brantford has interests in. So we own land, but the city of Brantford's planners can't be the ones that really look at, that really represent the city in the block planning process. So we're bringing someone in so that they can look at properties like Powerline Road and the Mohawk Lake District and make sure that we are using that property to the best of our ability um, and, and consulting with the community about what they would like to see in those areas. So the next division is the Sanderson Center for the Performing Arts. If you have not been here, please contact me. We will give you a behind the scenes tour. You will get on the stage, take photographs. Please take this tour and bring you up into the rafters. It is a beautiful space. So the absolute crown jewel of Brantford. Um, it is in all of our marketing collateral. We rely on it as one of our main attractions. So it has over 1,100 seats in that theater, um, more than 200 days of use annually. So a lot of that right now, dance competitions. In the spring, dance competitions are bread and butter for the Sanderson Center. It is huge here in Brantford. Um, and the Sanderson Center attracts over 70,000 visitors per year. And 40% or 40 of them come from outside of our community. So it's a really, really great space to be. 
Um, and their, their season announcement, you'll all be getting an invitation for. It's on May 24th at 5 p.m. So hopefully you can join. And then our last division is Discover Brantford. So again, they are a destination marketing organization. So when you hear Kara use the term DMO, it's destination marketing or management organization. So that division is always looking to maximize tourism potential for the city. Um, so a lot of the numbers that we'll, we'll show right now are pre-COVID numbers. Obviously this division was significantly impacted by the pandemic. We are still recovering. Our tourism oriented businesses are still relying very heavily on this division. Um, but prior to that, some of the events that we are able to track, we had almost 60,000 visitors to them resulting in over $7 million in economic impact. And the division also has several different key markets from travel media. So this person actually brings in bloggers and influencers, send them, sends them on tours in our community. We've had a couple of those uh, posts on TikTok in the last several years go viral. So it's really, really um, an impactful um, position where we can actually work with people from outside of communities and, and enhance what we're able to do here. Culinary tourism is a new market for us. We started that in late 2019, early 2020. It is growing all the time. Cultural tourism, leisure tourism, which is paddling, cycling, and trails. Um, and also, we, we also coordinate the city's public art collection with part of the arts and culture portfolio and oversee the city's uh, cultural grant programs. And if you haven't been there yet, the Tourism Center at 399 Wayne Gretzky Parkway closed just over a year and a half ago and um, we have a new tourism information desk at the Wayne Gretzky Sports Center so that is for tourists and residents if you're ever looking for things to do this is a great place to send newcomers as well we have orientation newcomer welcome packages that is a great first stop for them um, so these are this is our pat on the back slide so um, in 2021 the Sanderson Center and I don't know why that says tourism Brant. that should say Brantford um, we're the winner and runner up for the Safe Travel Stamp Award through the Travel Industry Association of Ontario. So that showed a commitment to safe travels related to COVID-19. Um, so that's anywhere from cleaning protocols to appropriate programming. Um, we're also continually identified as the best location to invest. Um, the City of Brantford was nominated for Outstanding Film Commission at the Location Managers Guild International Awards in 2022 related to our work with The Handmaid's Tale. That was the episode that was filmed right there <laughs> at City Hall. Um, so that was a, a huge, huge accolade. Uh, we were up against, um, yeah, yeah, a production that was filmed in Hawaii was one of those. Who was the film? Why am I forgetting it? Was it Station Eleven? Which ended up also filming here. I'm sorry, I'm missing it. When was that? James when Bond. Was yep. Um, <laughs> we're also recognized as one of the top 10 cities to buy real estate in Canada up until 2020. So we're, we're often recognized as a really strong community to invest in, as well as also a strong community to do business in related to customer service. So that is the end of the presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions about the department, anything that you have right now. I know this is our first meeting too, so any question is on the table. I got a question. Uh, since this is a new committee, um, what do you kind of envision for this committee to do? Besides the, you know, like you kind of explained already the this notion of, um, moving a, you know across sectors and things and kind of having like a cohesive connection across those things i think is really excellent but it's uh you're kind of reimagining the, the the landscape so i'm just curious what we had in mind sure so um really the the mandate of this committee is to look at economic development as really a, a cohesive in a cohesive vision so we would work with this committee to review policies that affect economic development in our community. That doesn't mean just our policies, that could also be just cross corporation policies. Is there something that's hindering business development in our community? Is there something that's hindering artistic development? Um, that, that committee providing advice on that kind of thing would be very, very helpful. Um, this committee will also be the steering committee for the economic development 
strategy, which is a project underway right now. So you all would have received invites to our focus groups. Um, that project started in January. So you are a little bit further down the line, but that those focus groups or the one-on-one -on -one interviews at this time will give you an introduction to the project. And um, I think I've also included a little bit about that in the, the report as well, just to, to give you a bit of a background. Once that strategy is complete too, I would love for this committee to look at that and really sink their teeth into certain directives. So whatever you're really passionate about, or there could be some specific projects that council refers to you as well, that they would like you to work on. So I think it, it will change with time. It's a brand new committee. If there's certain projects that you're really passionate about too, then bringing forward a notice of motion to look into those would be very, very helpful. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really hoping that this committee is, is forward thinking. They look yeah. at the vision, they look at what the pinch points are in the community, what's hindering economic development and, and helping us to advocate for that at the council level. Yeah, if I can add to that, um, not to steer your thunder or anything, but I just wanna maybe suggest that, uh, to set the tone of, uh, of, uh, of our meetings, uh, to be very active, right? Uh, to really keep our eyes open and then to bring those ideas here so that we can discuss them and apply them. Um, I think that's really, in my mind, I'd, you know, just to feed off of what you said, Sarah, is really the, the purpose of this committee is to have a sort of ground level workers that are out in, uh, in their various sectors that they can bring back those pain points and then we can do something about them, right? Yes, Gary. Um, I just have a couple of general questions about your um, 2022 report. Sure. Um, so the sports tourism, I noticed, was way down in 2022, although things like the Sanderson Center did okay, as well as um, the motor coach, they did pretty good as well. So I was wondering, do we still have a sports tourism um, the committee and policy? We don't have a sport tourism committee, uh, but we do have a sport tourism strategy that we implemented in 2019, and that guides the work plan of our sport tourism coordinator. Um, so she implements and she does a yearly update to council. She just took her report in March that updated on those activities from the previous year uh, in the realm of sport tourism in, in Brantford. And do you have a reason why the sports was so low in 2022 as compared to everything else. Everything else seemed to pick up, but sports didn't. I have no concrete answer, um, but my own speculation, we saw the same sort of thing at the Sanderson Center with uh, school trips and that kind of right. thing. So motor coaches are cater to a senior market the same way our local sport orgs cater to youth. And both of those markets seem to be the slowest to respond and bounce back from COVID. But we've already seen an uptick in 2023 with our sport tourism market. Right. So we anticipate that. Yeah, because that's going to be a huge market. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just one more question. Um, we don't seem to brag about the library enough. It's a world-class facility. Is that not under the city umbrella that we should be putting in some of your reports as well? Yeah, uh, through the chair. So the library would be included in when we report on cultural development. Um, so the library does receive funding from the municipality, but they operate at arm's length. So we wouldn't report on their successes necessarily because we, we don't want those successes. Um, but the library is included in kind of the most of the community marketing that we do. And if there are events that are uh, from a, a tourism or a, an attraction perspective. So sometimes they have the, the author series that have like big headliners. So those are events that we would advertise within this, this department. Okay. We are already discussing the report, but we have to actually put the item on the floor. So may I please have a mover and seconder to place the item uh, on the floor? Mover? Right. Seconder. Am I allowed to do that? You know, yes, you're allowed. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank now you. The item is on the floor. Let me put this here too. So you can I, see. I did. I have one question. Um, so the public guard subcommittee was a committee that reported to the cultural advisory committee, which is now part of this committee. So, I is there a plan? Yeah. For the public guard subcommittee. Yes. Through the chair, I can do it all officially. Uh, 
through the chair uh, at your next meeting, you'll also receive a request for appointments. Um, there is one representative from this advisory committee that will be requested to be appointed to the public arts subcommittee. That member typically acts as chair. Um, and then we'll also be looking to for someone to be appointed to the cultural and built heritage grant program subcommittee as well. So we will be forming that second subcommittee and also looking for appointees at our next meeting. So we'll give you a little bit of a brief background on those in a report format so that you know what you're getting yourselves into when you appoint individuals. Thank you. Back in the uh, 80s, uh, Madam Chair, I brought a lot of small businesses to the city um, because we were building incubators, smaller square footage. The city was selling the land, as Sarah said, uh, on a discount basis. Uh, so the developers were able to fill them and lease them. And most of the businesses came from the surrounding areas, Burlington, Oakville, Mississauga. And right now there's no more land left for uh, th those kind of incubators. So what are we recommending to the council? Are we gonna attract small businesses? Or are we gonna focus just on large businesses? Great question, um, yeah. 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 Sorry. Sorry, if you know the, the north part of the city, the Dalkey, Copernicus, and uh, Eastern Road. That's where I built most of them. And most of those businesses came uh, from our town. That's my question. Are we going to be able to bring those businesses, more businesses, but we need those incubators? Through the chair, I can respond to that. And I, I, I think that's actually a, a question to be posed to the the committee members as well. Um, and it is also something to reference when you're being consulted through the economic development strategy process. So we can't be all things to all people, but that economic development strategy does look at what are the strategic directions, where are the pathways where we should spend our time as staff and as members of council um, and our to prioritize and then attract. So if small businesses um, are what we're looking at and we're we don't have industrial business parks then do we look at small businesses related to infill development is there anything that we can do to make that process a lot smoother so that we can attract those specific businesses are we looking at specifically looking at businesses in the downtown core and what can we do to make that more appealing for investors so that that's absolutely something we'll explore through the strategy process and and that is for the entire year, we'll be working on that sure. project. Good. Good question. Great question. Question. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm just going to help the chair out. So uh, the second part of uh, the recommendation, it asks for up to five members to be appointed to the economic development strategy working session that's going to take place on June 28th. Um, so we're just looking for up to five members. So is there anybody that would like to volunteer to be part of um, that group? Do you know what time of day they're meeting? Yeah, it's 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. and it'll be at the Rope Factory. So normally we would love to invite all of you, but we deal with the the quorum issue. So we need to ensure that there is less than quorum who will attend that specific event. Hopefully a week is back. We don't want to handle it. It's a Thursday? Wednesday? Thursday. I would love to sit Wednesday. on that. If, if Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Okay. So, so yeah. far I have uh, Jang and Ray. I just have to confirm if I'm going to be away. That's why I asked what day. I think I'm leaving on Thursday, so it's probably fine. Check. Nine to 12 at the Rope Factory on the Wednesday. Perfect. And I also see David Prang and um, Peter Meir online that would like to sit on it as well. Okay. So, so we have Jang, Ray, Peter, and Dave. And we do have space for one more if anybody else would like to sit on it. Sorry, what's the date on it, Emma? Uh, June 28th. 
still be meeting more than once, right? Um, that strategic working session is an event. And then a lot of what happens at that will report back to this committee. So you'll all hear about what happened. I will be in Europe. Um, so I'll okay. be able to. Okay, perfect. We can just go with these four. If anybody um, changes their minds later, uh, you can reach out to us. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, thank you. I'm really interested. I just need to check with um, with my team at work. Okay. Okay. Stephanie, we can add you to the list and yeah. then you can let me know because then you'll be appointed. Yeah. Okay. Just we, we can only have five. You can only have five. Okay. You can add me if Stephanie can't. If that's Stephanie or Anna Egg Delegate. Sure. Can we do sure. that? Yeah. Is there any discussion? If not, uh, all those in favor? Favor. Favor. In favor. <laughs> Opposed. So that item carried unanimously. Thank you. There are no consent items. There are no resolutions, and there are no notices of motion. So the meet. So the meeting is now adjourned. But I did just want to let everyone know when the next meeting is. It would be helpful if I knew that. <laughs> that's just one moment. It is on May 17th, and that's the next meeting of the Economic Development Tourism and Cultural Initiatives meeting. That's the last one before the summer. I believe so. There's a break after that until September, I think. We meet in June. Yes, we do meet in June, June 21st. Yeah. And that's 5.30, right? Yes. Yes. Here or online, it is up to you. Great. So we are now adjourned. I just have a general question. It doesn't have to happen during the meeting, but um, 